Hi everyone, welcome back to another Diablo Immortal video. In this video, I wanted to share my Necromancer Survivability Wild Brawl build that I use quite a lot in this event when it comes around. It's quite a fun build to use, it's quite easy to use as well, and it's one that just, um, it just keeps you surviving for a lot longer and it's just quite easy to get out the way out of tricky situations when you're getting chased, when you end up in a group of enemies, um, and at times it's helped me actually win Wild Brawl when there's not many players left. I've just been able to survive quite a lot by myself towards the end. But obviously with a group, it just helps you assist that group and just, um, you know, avoids you dying too easily and having your teammates come to find you and revive you. Because obviously the whole point of Wild Brawl is to survive till the end. So survivability is really important, of course, um, and not just having just a damage build. So I think this is a nice mix and it works really well for me. I thought I'd like to share it. So... Let's go in with the skills that I like to use for this Necromancer survivability build. So if I have a look at my skills. So the skills I'm using are Bone Spear for primary. Then I've got Bone Armor. Wraith Form. Command Skeletons. And Borrowed Time. So you can get an idea already that, you know, I've got a lot of defensive get out the way type of skills here um, not as many offensive skills but it is quite effective just to keep your character going a lot longer even if you're in a weaker party so you can get out some sticky situations and sort of keep keep going and fighting um, and help your team out where you can but the as I'll show the skeletons do do a decent amount of damage with this build and it is quite annoying when you're chasing somebody down now let's have a look at the essences that I pick for this build so, if we have a look at the essences, and of course, with Bot Wild Brawl, you have to remember that the, there's no point going in with set items, because when you go into Wild Brawl, you're going to have to pick up your set items, sort of build it up from there. And also, the last two uh, equipments that you've got, so the offhand sort of main weapon and the shield right at the bottom, they're not going to be available as well. So, you need to sort out your build with just the first six slots of equipment only. Um, that's just one thing to remember there. So if we have a look at the essences. So in the helm, um, I'm going in with Blinding Storm. So this is the one where the command skeletons summon the Storm Rider Legion that automatically teleport, and that's the important part, and to deal damage to enemies with lightning. Uh, and obviously I get an increased 18% damage and then another 10% damage because of awakened slots now the important thing here is the automatically tele teleport to your enemy this is great when you're running after somebody in world brawl who sort of um you've caught his attention or his or her attention and they're sort of running away as you're trying to chase them if you fire out these skeletons they will automatically jump to where the enemy is running to and start damaging them i've managed to get a few kills with this as people are trying to run away just because I'm not able to catch them, but my skeletons are, and then it also slows them down as well, so I can sort of catch up. Their health's going down, and I can do some remaining damage. So this is a really fun one out of all of the different types of skeletons that you can have, um, just because it automatically goes and teleports to the enemy as they're running away. Uh, for the chest, this is a no-brainer. This is just the bone armor, giving myself, and importantly, the whole party member, um, five charges of damage immunity each of which prevents all damage from a single hit and I get an additional cooldown reduction here. I get 7.2% and another 10%. So obviously in Wild Brawl you want to stay together in your party as much as you can. This just means I make sure I'm running to my party members, casting bone armor to help them out and not only me, um, just to keep them surviving longer so then they can do as much damage when we're fighting together. So definitely keep this one. Right, for the shoulders, um, this one can potentially be swapped out with something else, but I've gone in with Bone Armor increases movement speed by 30% while active. It just means that I can run around that World Brawl map uh, a lot quicker. Um, getting to the shrines is really important, so I'll make sure I hit Bone Armor if I see a Frenzy or a Protection Shrine show up, and then I'll speed towards that shrine as much as quick as I can. Or if I'm being chased... I will make sure I hit uh, Bone Armor to give me that increased movement speed just to get out of the way. Maybe I need to get back to my party or get to a safe zone. Um, so this essence is more for survivability for me and I've just found it helps me with that increased speed. Now, obviously there's other options that you can do that link together 
with your bone armor so you can have the one which has immunity to all effects which knock out of your position not that important but it's only if you're like fighting in a group of enemies and they're sort of knocking you away um, and i think the other one would be either you know your bone armor increasing your primary attack speed um, and there's bone armor increasing your critical hit damage if you've got a pretty decent critical hit chance um, but for this build it's not hugely damage heavy i mean the primary attack and the skeletons do do a decent amount of damage but I just want to be a bit quicker just to get out of the way, be quite sneaky, sort of move myself around the map efficiently. So that's why I've gone with the increased movement speed. For the legs, I've just gone with proximal, proximal fear. So this is where Ray Form now causes enemies you touch to flee in fear and damages them. So I will use this if, um, if it's a one-on-one -on -one in Wild Brawl, I will sort of Ray Form around the enemy cast fear and then sort of attack them and in between you know when the cooldowns back up I'll fear them again um it's also useful when you're getting away sort of fear some enemies just to stun them for a little while and then just sort of get out of the way um I quite like this one it seems to work for me and I get some increased damage from ray form obviously it's not going to deal that amount of damage but it's something uh looking at other options for this one I mean you've got while well, bone armor is active the movement speed and attack speed of you and your summons are increased by 19%. So that's another one which I'd potentially use as well, which would give me even more movement speed uh, when I'm running away. But I do like seeing the fear get cast on the enemies in Wild Brawl because it seems to be quite effective in Brawl just because everyone's like, sort of balanced. So um, yeah, I, I tend to stick to this one. For the main weapon, I've gone with Command Skeleton's damage increased by 19%. And their life has gone up by 10% because Command Skeletons is my main uh, damage skill here for this build. I've just made sure I've got an essence which sort of enhances this Command Skeletons damage and works together with Storm Rider Legion. So when I do cast their skeletons and they teleport to the enemy, they'll deal as much damage as I can get out of them. And then I can obviously help with my primary attack. And for the shield... I use 19% of all damage you take is taken by your skeletal champions instead. Command skeleton summon life increased by 10%. So they get a bit more life. And um, the cooldown, when the cooldown goes down for um, skeletons, as I cast the skeletons, 19% of any damage I get taken is taken by the skeletal champions just to keep me surviving for a bit longer if I'm in a sticky situation. So um, yeah, that's just another survivability essence that I've got there and obviously the last two I'm not going to look at because they don't matter those slots are not going to be active in Wild Brawl so it's a really basic build and setup but it's fun to use and it works for me I've been using this build for quite a lot of Wild Brawl fights um, I either use this one or I go in with a more summon heavy one where I've got the command golem that keeps the mages alive for longer and I can summon you know about four or five mages so i've got loads of mages i just find that sometimes the golems like really slow in wild brawl especially if i'm chasing someone and um i find that this build works for me nicely when i'm sort of chasing an opponent down because i can throw the uh, teleport skeletons at them and then chase after them with ray form and the bone armor speed do some primary attack damage fear them and sort of stick to my party give them bone armor it just works quite nicely so yeah that's the that's the build that I've been using for quite a while for Wild Brawl. As for my gems that I go in with, um, I've got Roiling Consequence, um, Blood Soaked Jade. I've got Phoenix Ashes. I've got Chip of Stone Flesh, with Flesh, Chip of Stone Flesh with Storm Vault as the Orcs, and I've got Echoing Shade, and I've also got Starfire Shard. So. Yeah, the essences, and then obviously I've got some runes equipped as well. For the Paragon, I've gone in with, once again, more survivability by having Cheat Death uncontrollable. So I just have less uh, effects from Complete Loss of Control. Grizzled Veteran, Hold Formation, and Overpower. And then I've gone with Benefactor for my legendary skill to cast on myself and my team members uh, we're using my bone armor buff. So yeah, that's the build that I use for Wild Brawl. And yeah, it's 
works for me. It's quite fun. I will play out a wild brawl fight with this build in action just so you can see how I use it and how I sort of get around the map quite quickly and how you can sort of sneakily get away from certain situations if you don't, if you get caught in them. Um, like I said, it's, I've had plenty of wild brawl matches in the past where I've had a lot of people chasing me and you know you get the cheat death from gladiator kick in and then you get out of the way because the wraith forms back up i get bone armor back on as well so they're trying to hit me and it's not doing much and then they try end up killing me again in some other situation and borrowed time kicks in and then i get away by the time i get away borrowed times come back up again so if they kill me again i'm back down and then back up so basically i'm using wraith form bone armor just to run away when i need to and then attack when it's safe when i'm with my party members so if anyone out there's looking for like a, a survivability build that you know um they don't have to be hugely damage heavy they can support their party members and try and survive as long as you can till the end just get that victory um, this is a nice one to try out and obviously just tweak it as you see fit so hope that helps anyone check it out and um let me know what you think uh obviously it's not the only necromancer wild brawl build that i go in with like i said i do go in with a more um player damaging heavy one or summon heavy one as well but this one is actually one that i've actually used the most out of the builds that i've tried just because it just i found that i've ended up surviving towards the end uh, like a lot higher probability of me surviving to the end with this build compared to some other builds where i might get killed a bit too early and um yeah then that's really it so i uh, hope you enjoy watching i will play out a wild brawl match after this so see how that goes Okay, so we just have a new match here for Wild Brawl. And as I've shown, I've taken in the survivability build in here. That's really sneaky and you can chase after people easily. You can get away from people quite easily as well. And um, yeah, got cheat death, borrowed time that can kick in if you do happen to get killed. And also bone armor to support the rest of the party. And benefactor as well for the legendary skill. So let's see how I get on with this random party that I've just joined. Okay, so we can see a shrine down south here. They're really important. Okay, not that one. So the important ones are the protection shrines and the frenzy shrines. They're the ones that you want to get. Okay, so everyone's uh, collecting loot at the moment. And we do have a protection on. Must have been this shrine here. Someone clicked on. That's good. It's always best to engage in combat when you do get the shrines quite early on. You've got a big advantage over other players who don't have the buffs on. And it's an easy way to get them out of the way before they start picking up loads of loot. There's another shrine down here. Let's see which one this is. So protection has worn off. It's a protection shrine. Perfect. It doesn't seem to be any players around here. Death is quite the teacher. The great cycle continues onward. Oh, is there a fight here? Looks like there's a fight. Is there? Or is he just hitting just hitting random enemies? Okay, never mind. Oh, oh, Frenzy Shrine up here. We need to get that before anyone else does. Got it. Okay, now we've got the Frenzy Shrine. We want to try and take out these other players. There we go, got their loot. So you can see how important that Frenzy Shrine was. As soon as I got it, I had a huge advantage over that player. Um, took him down very quickly. Okay, bone armor on my party. There is more. Kill some of these enemies to get closer to level Your 10. Hmm, where are the other players? Oh, actually, there we go. 
Okay, we have a player here. We kind of need need a shrine. Okay, I'm going to chase after this guy. So here we go. The skeletons are ch chasing him as soon. Oh, did it? He died as I was trying to explain that. But basically, I threw my skeletons at him to try and chase, um, chase him down. And then I was going after him. There's another guy here. So skeletons on this guy, and he's down. The great cycle continues. Take his loot. Okay, we're already level ten, so we don't have to worry about that. There's another shrine around here we need to get. I don't know if this is the it's the invisibility. That's a pretty useless one. Um, okay, just shrine down here. Let's check. Just check if this is the protection shrine. It is. That's exactly what we need. Okay, the circle's getting smaller. There's a guy up north who's quite spread out. I really need that guy to come over here so he can stick to stick as a team. Okay, that guy went down. So you can see when I'm near the near my um, party members, I want to use bone armor as much as I can. Okay, let's take out these players here. They're down. Any loot here? Yeah, got lots of loot. Got shepherd's gear actually. That's good for my summons. Let's put the shepherds on. And I might drop this one for anyone else who needs it. If they're still around, no, they're not. I'll take it then. Okay. Um. The shrines. Okay, there's a shrine down here. Let me just see what the... Oh, actually. It's, somebody might come and revive this guy. Uh, let me just check the cooldown on this shrine here. Okay, protection shrine is back up again. So we click that. And let's go and put bone armor on my party members. Just in case they're in trouble. Okay, this guy's alright. Put bone armor anyway. And... A bit spread out to be honest. There's a guy down south who's a bit far away. Maybe he's actually found a player. Let's let's try and no, no, he hasn't. Okay, let's get back together again. Let me check the cooldown of this protection shrine down here. Uh, we've got 18 seconds. I may hang around until that cooldown comes back up again and um, click on our shrine because that's going to be really really useful as the circle starts to close in a bit more let's have a look at the timer again that's uh, one second there we go so protection shrine that's going to help us with the small amount of players that are left okay bone armor command skeletons and here we go here's the rest of the players so let's take out this guy he's down Grab his loot, he didn't have much. And there's another guy down. And there we go, victory. Bang, there we go. So that's kind of how I use this build. Um, you know, it gets me around the map quite quickly. It gets me to the shrines quickly. Um, the skeletons are really, really useful because they will teleport right to the enemy and they won't be chasing them from far away. And then I can do whatever damage I can uh, to help around with that with my primary attack and obviously my party members if you're hanging, hanging around them they can help out as well so that's pretty much how the survivability build for Necromancer works in Wild Brawl like I said try it out it works quite nicely for me um, and yeah hopefully you can give it a go and sort of tweak it a little bit to your liking um, oh, unfortunately I didn't get MVP here uh, there's another guy who did get five kills in so well done to him he's got like a little red spirit baby bursting out of his chest alien style uh, but we did win that one so yeah hope you enjoyed watching and um, I'll see you in the next video thanks a lot